Okay, it's time for a trip down a bit of a rabbit hole. Join me if you dare. We were talking a few months ago with my son Sasha about how to present correlation results visually in a way that may be more approachable for those who are not so quantitatively inclined. Sasha, I should say, is a data geek. Not sure how that happened, but I will add that his work makes my own look like kindergarten by comparison. Sasha is a PhD candidate in sociology at the University of Waterloo. His specialty is social network analysis, every bit of which is quantitative in the extreme. By spring, he's hoping to complete and defend his dissertation. The subject matter is diversity, information diversity as relates to efficiency. Ivory Tower stuff for sure, but some of the work he does ties in very nicely with what we're doing here. Sasha has created a set of correlation network maps for us, visually depicting how measures in this survey connect to one another. We'll start from 10,000 feet and then zoom in on how 31 specific measures are linked to each of time spent on homework, time spent on social media, hours of sleep, and the experience of discrimination at school. In the end, we'll pull back out to 30,000 feet to reveal how the whole picture fits together. In this first slide, we can see how question B on general satisfaction fits together with section C, a series of 15 attitudinal statements, and section D on self-appraised preparedness. If you pause the video, you can look more closely at the listing of survey measures to your left. Strength and correlation is reflected in the thickness and proximity of the joining lines. You can see how most of the C measures are tightly grouped, and to a lesser extent, so are the D measures. Nodes, or variables, are situated closer together when they have more and stronger correlations with each other. Question C12, I have at least one close friend at school, is among the farthest from the other nodes because Compared to the other variables, it has fewer strong correlations. This seems strange because we all know how dependent success at school is on the presence of a close friend. This seems at first glance to be counterintuitive. In fact, what this reflects is one inherent weakness of correlation analysis. Along with the old saying, correlation is not causation, we must remember that correlation is a measure of movement in one variable with change in another. When one variable is so strongly skewed to one side, it doesn't move. So its correlation with other variables is diminished. So while the presence of a close friend is inarguably central to the student experience, because the overwhelming majority of survey participants report the presence of a close friend, there's little variability and hence lower relative correlation. One other key item I'd like to point out on this slide is the central position of question C7. I feel respected and valued at school. If you've followed the presentation of results in sequence so far, you'll already know how important agreement with this statement is to virtually every other measure in the survey. As you can see here, that conclusion bears out visually. Feel free, as I say, to pause the video to look more closely at how measures connect to one another. This next slide depicts the connection of hours spent on homework, A6, with all 15 attitudinal measures. All Section C measures are correlated to one another positively as reflected in the green lines connecting the nodes. Negative correlation is indicated by red lines. Most notably in this picture, time spent on homework is negatively correlated with agreement in the statement, I feel capable of handling the day-to-day -day academic workload, question C4. Of interest, time on homework is positively correlated, though not strongly, with agreement in the statements, I am enthusiastically involved in out-of-classroom activities, C1, and I am passionate about the study of at least one subject, C2. Again, we don't know the direction here of cause and effect, Note the centrality of measures C7 
8, 9, 10, 11, and 14. Time spent on homework matched up with self-appraised preparedness across 15 skills reveals positive correlation with setting high expectations for myself, question D11. Negative correlation is shown for preparedness in making choices that support my emotional well-being, D9. In a stunning fashion, and as also seen in the graph set for this measure, time spent on social media is correlated and only in the negative with virtually everything in the attitudinal series. Nothing positive, nothing. The same is true for time spent on social media crossed with self-appraised preparedness throughout the 15 listed skills. These are slides you'll want to share broadly. I, for one, have canceled my Facebook account. Of no surprise, hours of sleep is a strong positive correlate to everything else in this series. In particular, feeling capable of handling academic workload. Hours of sleep is also strongly correlated to students' self-appraised preparedness throughout the list of 15 skills. Of note, stronger correlations for hours of sleep in this series include handling stressful situations, D7, making choices that support my emotional well-being, D9, and organizing time effectively, D10. Similarly, if a student has not experienced discrimination at school, their ratings in both the Attitudinal Series and the Self-Appraised Preparedness Series are much stronger. No surprises there, but certainly these findings should inform meaningful conversations with and among students going forward. For the final slide in this series, we'll pull back out to the 30,000 foot view, placing all 34 measures in one picture. I hope this visual has added value for you in understanding what students have told us in this survey. Have a great day.